Well, hello there. Hello. What should we do now? What's next? You tell me you're hosting now. Think it, am I really? Is there, yeah. a, is there hosting to be done? Why don't we make the producer Patrick host? He's too far away. He's over there. He can shout, I guess. But anyway, we have map two. Map two. It's dust two. And it will be the two Swedish teams we just saw. Of course, it is, as you can now see, Godson and Epsilon making this announcing announcement redundant. But we had the pistol round. We got a mod. We have an incendiary around Crims. That's cool. That is really cool, actually. You don't typically see that. We're seeing see more that. grenades in pistol rounds in general. Yeah. We're seeing uh, we're seeing more things, more objects, more items. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it is. I mean, he has it ready. Look at so, that setup. so he's expecting a B rush. They're expecting a B rush. We're seeing an evolution. Perhaps a revolution. There are two players for Epsilon in long right now. One is in the pit. They're probably asking, what is going on? It's a very interesting setup and it's starting to move around. Um, I was going to say from Godsend in the low tunnel there. Disco, Doppelan. Oh, look, the bomb is in a very weird situation and blind. Rez is like, oh my god, I need to hide. And there's the bomb and this is going to be the round collapsing. Oh dear. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I mean... Very active play in middle. But I mean, that's, I mean that is somewhat normal active play in middle from CTs. But just the the way Godsend wanted to push up a dock was awesome. That's bonkers. Epsilon had two players in long for so long, and left the bomb in B tunnels. With well, there were two players in B tunnels. In fairness, I mean that must be mad confusing for them. It's like where, what is, why. Either way, God sent, get a pistol. And that's a very different uh, pistol round to anything I've seen in Dust 2 recently, which is great. Constant evolution and revolution here oh. in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I love the, the jumping sideways HE throw there from Flusher. That's a nice little small touch, but one that is fantastic. Now we'll see whether or not they can... Uh, I mean, because Epsilon are being herded right now around the map. Let's see if they can actually... Get some frags somewhere. A nice little small touch. <laughs> You're gonna punch me, aren't you? Look here. You what? You hate? Do you hate? You hate do you hate me right now? No. Oh. Why would I hate you? Because I'm pointing out all the ridiculous things to say. Oh, it's not ridiculous. It depends. Small little is ridiculous. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I love. <laughs> yeah. This is basically the coffee. This is your singular point of amusement. Yeah. Let me point out all the things that done says, which are mildly wrong or inappropriate. Yeah, I can take it though. I don't just give, I can take it. But you're too nice to give. <laughs> we'll see. Which makes it even more amusing. Um, it's really, um, you know what? You know what's legit on Dust 2 on CT side? What is legit on Dust 2 on Negev, CT side? Negev, <coughs> in the last round over towards B, if you buy Negev in a flashbang, go through double doors, and then you walk backwards while uh, deploying the flashbang in an arc so it lands at the top of the arch and then flashes anyone who's trying to rush. And then Negev. It's legit. And then Negev. Yeah. It's a legitimate last round of Dust2 strat. And JW, being JW, is going to walk all the way through long doors with the UMP. He wants these close headshots. He wants the one-taps. We have no Kevlar on any of these players. Barba is uh, trying to just get some information. But what is the plan here for Epsilon? That's my question. What is your plan, Epsilon? You've got five Glocks, you've got no grenades. You've got a man passively outside Apps and a man passively outside Long who's just been taken down. And the rest of you are biding on time for a moment, but how are we going to get this bomb planted? That is my question. That is my cue. Absolutely taken down. I mean, you, I, I, would, I would say just don't give yourself false hope. Don't pretend like you're going to win this round. Or that you can even get a bomb down. I mean, that that is really... <coughs> well, run boost. Okay, yeah, run, run boost can, can give you the bomb down, but only really if you have also at least a grenade to go with it. Well, you should always have an objective. So Rez is going for the cat drop, which is not going to work out because there's a player in CT spawn. And Pronex, see, here we go. Numbers game. This is what I like. Nice. The numbers game. They did it. That is glorious. Just get Hurrah. the numbers down short and charge. And you can, you know, maybe the guy who jumps down into CT spawn is just a, a lamb to be sacrificed to run distraction to four people away to help the rest of the team get closer to the to short and plant the bomb. I love that. Numbers game, charge on short, gauntlet. Don't be afraid to die for your team. I for like the general objective of getting the bomb down. I love that round when it, it features Tech Nines too, actually, in the false spy scenario. It's actually really fun. 
uh, for the T's. And we'll have the UMPs raining in. Now, if Gosling were to win this round, that's when things start to get a little bit scary. Because when does the money run out? When? See, look, he did it again. I've seen that before. It's lovely. But it's not something I see very often. It's It makes a lot of sense. I like I like that. Because instead, you have to like run it in a, in a line towards the yeah. angle, which yeah, actually yeah. makes you very susceptible to just dying if someone's peeking at that spot. But there, you can't really kill Flush that easily. You have to or peek with like an orb or something and flick him down. I don't know. Give him a swipe. Now we'll see a bit of aggression potentially. Looks like they want to get it in there through the smoke. Disco dot plan. Is he going to be disco double or disco dead? Looks like he might be disco double right now. He's able to get the first kill. Second one comes in. Oh, beautiful stuff. That's that's feels good. Ooh. If you are epsilon. And now they've got the bomb in a position where they can push into B. Although Flusher has himself some counter grenades. It's a pretty rough spot, actually, for Pronax as well. Right now he has to work out. He stays in this position. We've got the rotation back towards A. Back towards B. Epsilon have the time. Bronax. Or is it going to be Thronax? <laughs> That's, I like that. This smoke, if they plant default, this smoke helps him. They're planting double stack, but they're faking. That's going to allow him time to get into the site, and he almost gets a one versus one. But not quite. Depending, it's really hard to um, to plant behind double stack in the right spot so you don't get sprayed through the box or expose yourself too much to one side. When there's only one person left, it's a little bit easier, but uh, there we go. The round is successful. I don't think Godson were terribly concerned because now they can go for their buy, and if they win this round, they will break the money of Epsilon, or they're likely to, depending on the plants as well. And they can have a good time. We've seen some... That was the area where we saw JW, uh, I think it was against Chris J, drop a HE, and then shoot through the dirt, kicked up, and shoot Chris J straight that in was the jaw. godlike. Mm. I love that. That was one of the, the best individual plays. Because it, it, you can see that it was very in the moment. Like, incredibly in the moment. All of that was just pure gut instinct. That's, it was just pure Why don't JW, I do this? Pure JW, basically, which is, which is really nice. Why don't I do this and leave you with psychological problems? <laughs> psychological insecurities. Yeah. Oh, Pronax, he heard the jumping. Surely he had the jumping. Can't do the 180. He has taken down a player top mid, however. We'll see what impact that has. JW is backing things up over towards Long. So just in case Epsilon were like, OK, we've got Long. Let's push Long. JW ready and waiting. In the meantime, he has support on the site from Flusher. He's going to move back to support Flusher. JW has a flashbang as well. So uh, he can flash above and behind Flusher's head to help him defend this short area. That smoke has turned out to be very nice because if they want to push through it, it's going to be like around 35 seconds left. And that's not a lot of time to get stuff done, especially when they have to deal with both Flusher and JW, who's got the AWP. So JW, if he wins his battle really quickly, there is, I think, I think it's very unlikely that Epsilon are going to take A here. So it's very important that the that uh, JW is neutralized. Oh, he misses his flick though. That is that is a problem. And now he's looking for the player to push him on long. And is he going to have the timing on that? He's going to turn his attention back towards the bomb site for the frag. And somehow he's actually still alive, falling back to the car position. Oh, Rez does not have the bullets. Although I don't think he had the time either. So round goes to Godsent and they effectively reset Epsilon. Epsilon. So this is best case scenario for Godsent and that's... We. Oui. This is basically their plan or part of their plan when they have all those UMPs is it's okay. If we lose this round, we're not terribly concerned because if we win the next round, we can be in this situation where it's going to be easier for us, theoretically speaking, to extend a greater lead versus our opponent, who, as we have reset their loss bonus. But Freddy B, that is not the angle that you hold, my friend. Freddy B dead. Especially with a Glock. Is anybody there? Well, looks like somebody is. Now we see Epsilon getting taken down one by one. Not a thing for the... Actually, maybe they were going for the, uh, the short play once again. But th there are all kinds of gauntlets when you have Glocks versus a full by Godsent on the CT side. All kinds of gauntlets. All kinds. Okay. 
Hmm. Epsilon now with the AWP onto Draken. What does Pengarfins mean? What? What does Pengarfins? Is that Swedish? Pengar. Dra Draken's knife. If you look at Draken's knife in a second, it says Pengarfins on it. Is that like some Swedish thing? I know Peng Pengar is a word in Swedish, but I can't remember what it means. Uh, do you have money? Money exists. Money exists. Okay. So that's a terrible name. <laughs> yeah. So that's awful. Well, JW is got to be careful because there are people lower tunnel. Oh, man. Good to see that he still exists on the Godsent team. He is not a changed man. He is a dead man for this particular round, though, because Barbar will trade. Look at the movement here from Godsent. We've got B more or less abandoned as a result. A double man set up in middle. Crim's baiting for Schneider. Crim's going down immediately. That's not that was not the plan, actually. <laughs> That's not the plan. Ooh, head spotted. Heads popped. But not just Schneider onto Draken. He gets one. He gets a bit of his own medicine as well. And the bomb can now be picked up. Reclaimed by Epsilon. Flushes in a dangerous spot though. Epsilon is se seemingly wanting to go back towards B. And I love, look at the positioning from Godsend. They've got both players on the other side of the doors. There's surely no way that Epsilon ever expects to see two players here. Why? Why would you do this? But they did. They did. It's, it's beautiful. It's God, glorious. Godsend, uh, their, their mid-game decision making Great is reads. proving to be very tricky to deal with yeah. for teams. Because indeed, how they're just in the situations that you can't often prepare for. And it's paying off for the time being. Six to one. Epsilon, uh, again, the financial difficulties continue. We've got... Disco Doppland, formerly of Dirty Dildos, on a scout. And it's then like saying that, don't you? Four pistols. It's just all the Ds and DOs. I've got two Ds, Ds in my name. Well, it's like DI, Disco, DO, Doppland, and then another DI and another DO. So it's just, it's just, it sounds nice. It rolls off the tongue nicely. All right, then. Epsilon having perhaps a, uh, a more, more options with the current loadout that they are holding on to as opposed to the five block round where they managed to get a bomb plant. So shouldn't really count them out. Although it's annoying for Epsilon to lose their scout player straight away. The scout has so much utility in a round like this on a map like this. And they're going to be going in. And it's a similar kind of setup, although it's not as effective as when they just had Glocks. Perhaps because when they had Glocks, they weren't so concerned about getting the frags as they were about getting the bomb plant. Oh, that's a beautiful shot there from JW, just catching the hip of Freddy B. Seven to one, and the success continues for Epsilon. Full buys for them, lots of utility. We'll see if Epsilon can be uh, on the winning end of some of these jewels. Draken on the AWP, or Draken, I suppose they would say, or something like that. Draken. Okay, I'm not going to go that far. Draken. So we have lots of people. Oh, they're going for a cheeky play, and I think Pen has got penetration uh, tagged. 30 HP, yeah, they did it, so two for one there. That's big damage, and there will be trades. Such aggression from Godsend. They want to dominate and pillage. They are Vikings after all. It's th these, some of these rounds are a bit nuts, aren't they? I mean, the kind of push we saw there is a little bit extraordinary. Look, this is basically deathmatch right now. After 30 seconds have passed, we still have the orb jewel in the middle. We had, at that point, all three players of Godsend basically in middle as well. I mean, look, Flush is still there. Schneider is still there. They have to get aggressive anyway, so I, I do actually think that's awesome. But it does feel like uh, Epsilon are reading this somewhat. If Flush was able to steal this, if he could steal this round away, that would be heinous. Would be criminal. But will he be locked away? Looks like he's in a lock res away. Barbar knows where he is. He's turning the angle right now. You can see Flush is grinding the angle as well, turning the corner there. Doesn't know that he's there exactly. You can see that the Flusher has a, a vague awareness of the positioning of these players, but I think the timing here for Barbar... Oh, oh it is actually terrible! I thought it was going to be good, but it is not. It's, it's not good. It's bad. This is uh, this is a really weird game it's so, so far. It's so weird. It's somewhere between FPL and uh, like matchmaking with people who don't speak your language. <laughs> you know, your teammates are some teeth born. Well, let's see. Oh, almost two man spray down. The trades come in. That smoke is going to be very valuable. They spot each other in a corner, and Doplan will be able to get the plant. He needs to. Ten seconds remain. Flusher could charge straight in. He can't imagine there's going to be a fake in this situation. Does he hear it by double stack? He spots this Doplan eventually. 
down to the CZ and it will pay off once again as it always does that reliable CZ for Flusher again and again, my yeah. friend. I feel like Flusher, I've, I've said it so many times, to me he's the best CZ player. Most, most impactful. Yeah, because also if you look at his, it's, it's almost like, look at his consistency with it over the last year of play or more. Uh, that he, because he's all he never uses anything else on the CT side. Never uses the five seven. It's always a CZ. And uh, the old Fnatic lineup showed many, many good spots for CZs where other teams would choose five sevens or deagles, but they would show that the kind of hold. Oh, that is nasty in the face. The ability to hold it down and spray is can be very powerful in certain spots. Train is a train CT side train is a very, very good example. Maybe we can go into that if we have a train match today. We've got nine more maps or eight more maps. So we've got more maps than there are in the map pool, Dan. Yeah, that's the reality of things. Um, Schneider got tagged by two players there. Oh, I shot nasty. somebody in the head with an AK uh, three level doors once, but I can't claim any skill towards it. I was just tapping. There we go. Look at the aggression there, though, because Pranish has got a kill on, on lower dark. Because let's not forget that Godsent lost to Schneider straight away in the round, and Epsilon are charging up A long. So the information is already there for Godsent. They have a slight preemptive rotation coming in. Godsent are going to have players in position here, but it will be very hard. Their positioning is not good. Flusher needs to deliver. Doing pretty good so far. This is they can't get on the site, James. Difficult times that Molotov is going to be a bridge which is on fire. They cannot cross the bridge. And now the two man spray down will come in. And Godsent are having a very dominant map. They are one zero up against God's uh, against Epsilon. They're looking for maximum points from this best of two. And they are on the, the right track. It's Godsent seems to be a very tricky team for Epsilon to deal with. I just realized, because this does feel very back and forwards, this this match in particular, generally match? speaking. It's 9-1. You no, know, but that's the thing, right? It feels very backwards and forwards, but... In the rounds, you mean? Between in the rounds, mid -round. but it's 9-1, and Flusher's 18 for 1. Flusher has died once. That is nuts. He is very good. What kind of nuts? Brazil nuts? Macadamia. Almonds. I think Almonds technically a seed, actually. Really? Uh, I can't remember. But we've got a push coming in from Long Pronax. More aggression. Savage aggression. They're like dogs with rabies. They just can't stop. Do you like almonds? Love almonds. They're my favorite, actually, most of the time. Cashews, pistachios. But enough about nuts. We have Pronax going for the flank around Long. But Draken's there, of course, still after 40 seconds in T spawn with the scout. Where else would you be? There's dust two after all. Now Pranax is you've top got mid. <laughs> Pranax is top mid. You've got a player covering your back in T spawn. How are you not frustrated? <laughs> I don't know how to commentate that. How do you do this? This is bonkers. People are everywhere. We've got two CTs top mid. There's still the bomb's been planted on A, and we've still got Drake in the T-spawn. He can try to stop people jumping onto Xbox to move towards short. But JW's just chilling, just chilling out waiting for Drake to There's appear. There's five of them alive, and the bomb went onto A. With two of them on I don't... How does that configuration happen? Are they going to win this round? Are Epsilon going to win this round? Are they oh going to win this round, God. James? But Flush, he's only died once. Can they make it a second time? He's down to 9 HP. Oh, God. The dream is, is dying. Yeah, but there's no one on short to defend the, the, the bomb. No. Oh no, Flusher! There's oh, there's no, no way. There's, there's no, no way. way. There's no. No! 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 He can't do this. What is this round? The how? He's gonna live. Oh my god, he's still alive! Oh my god, how does he survive? He's got it. Uh, James, what is this? Uh, this is ridiculous. Why does this happen? I don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand <laughs> anything about he's that round. He's twenty for one, Dan. How? <laughs> That's the basic. I literally, I wish Yanko was here right now. Yeah. I wish Yanko was here right now. And Threat. And Threat. I was about to say the same, yeah. Oh my god. I don't, I don't, I cannot compute what just happened. That is one of the most absurd rounds. I've seen that. It's not North American Camp Strike. I'm like, I feel like I'm lagging now. My brain is lagging. I feel like uh, this game is DDoSing my brain. How could, how could this be game two of 10, Dan? <laughs> it's not fair, is how it? How could it be game two of 10? It's not, it's not fair. That is, uh, that is hilarious. But I, I need to watch it back at some point because that's just crazy. Anyway, we've got Godsend trying to hold down a short pit position. They've got players around the elevator and they're going to do well <laughs> so far. Four versus two. They're in control of the bomb to boot. And now it is Draken alone trying to double the score for Epsilon in round 12 of a potential 30 normal time.
That's like that's that's worse than that round when we that we saw in North America. I think it was Liquid was I think. I think if Liquid fell victim to this, where someone ninja defused one versus five, when it was planted on A, do you remember, do you remember that? It's just clean, clean ninja defuse one versus five on Dust Two. The cleanest on the on the A bomb site. Do you remember that? Two Liquid, <sighs> two Team Liquid. Ah yes, yes, I do remember that. Yeah. I can't remember who did it, but that was uh, that was quite something. What a what a bizarre turn of events. What a bizarre turn of events. It's just completely thrown me, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, they are consistent at getting these opening kills. But then, inevitably, we get the re-aggression out of Godsent from somewhere. But it might be a bit difficult at this point. They are running out of players. A lot of players. Just JW and Pranix there. Flash is dead. He died. His second death. That's very depressing. Very sad. Very sad. But we, we, we will pray for him and his soul. Off that ninja defuse, that was the most disgusting. I mean, does that even? That's not even a ninja defuse. That's just it, that's a WTF defuse. That's <laughs> a new category. <laughs> a new category of defuse has been created by Flusher, who has just died. Because it, I don't, I don't really know how to describe describe it. But either way, Epsilon are not having the best time in, <laughs> in Dust Two here. Oh dear, I I'm still processing. Because I'm still running the round through my mind a little bit, the the end at least as well. Because the, 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 if you remember the first half of that round, it was quite ridiculous. It looked very one-sided in that Godsent had all the map positioning apart from the A-bomb site. Somehow still lost everyone except Flusher. And then still somehow Flusher clutches the round. Is that even a clutch? I, I just... That's just a human failure. <laughs> human. I don't know what that is. I don't know if there's an explanation for that round. Scientific anomaly. Epsilon have doubled their score from one round to two as we move into the second last round of the first it's half. Flusher's deaths. A buy on both sides. Yeah, kill Flusher, win the round, basically. Appears to be the statistic. If you're looking on the paper. Three players towards long for Godsend. The pop flush comes in and they will take the long area. Again, we've got Draken in. He's going to just chill out and T-spawn for the time being. And I I mean, who can blame him? There's been so much aggression, flanking, pushing, yeah. taking of areas which are not traditionally CT by Godsend that it's no wonder Draken is just trying to hold things down in T-spawn, trying to slow down these Godsend Ooh. players. And Pranix is coming, so he might just get a kill in a second. Pranix is just sitting there. Because there's so much traffic towards upper dark, Pranix really wants to push. He really, really wants to push this angle. But he must also know... Oh, look at the timing. Draken just moved. <laughs> he just moved. And now he's coming back. Of course. It's, it's of course he's coming back now. Oh, uh, What's even better is if he looks through mid, he won't see Pranix. Oh Pranix stays God. on short because it's a blind spot to players in T-Spawn. So once again, we've got a player top mid on the CT side. Why is a player in T-Spawn <laughs> and he's killing T's? The timing was just unreal there from Pranix. I love it. It is just comical at this point. Highly, highly comical. Oh, we're getting a push into Upper Dark. They just, just love the pushing. They love it. I, lo oh, I love it too. Again. Gets a grenade and again! <laughs> oh man, that's the bomb as well. And again you and again. You just can't win. That's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. You wait and wait and wait and wait. And the second you take anything else that will move, people appear and shoot you in the chin. 18 seconds left, and there's no choice but for Draken to push the B bomb site. He's coming through the tunnel, and Flush is ready and waiting for him. That will be round number 12, and an economy reset for Epsilon as we move into the last round of the half. This has been quite brutal for the Epsilon side. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a, you can't really analyze this match. Godstone basically try to find any and every spot they can for aggression. Epsilon, I think, in some spots, have been getting in their heads a little bit about that aggression because. There's loads of spots where they have been managing to actually deal with it. Or actually, ooh, very nice, by Freddy B. Um, yeah, but well they've been able to deal with it quite well. But then some weird clutch or weird mistake happens later in the round. So I, I think everybody's just AF, like everybody's to some extent AFK in this match from a from one from one sense of it. Because how can you follow this? How can you follow the mind games here? There are. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Swedish gathers must be mighty fun. Yeah. If this this kind of madness happens in a team fight. Yeah. This is bonkers. Anyway, we've got a march, a frog march through middle doors. 
This is just mad deathmatch. Free fall deathmatch. Just crazy shoulder picking towards B. Doesn't work out. And again, oh, JW this time with a CZ and two kills. What's the player top mid? That's the last player. That's Draken. Trying to find a third round for his side. Smartly using the wall to avoid the flashbang. But it's a one versus three. They know where he is. He knows where maybe two of the three are. He's advanced from T-spawn. He has indeed. He's, he's moved forward. But this is a, a dire situation. Made a bit better. He, he can knows, win this round, he actually. He knows the W will not fear. So W's not even trying to hide his button. Just constantly <laughs> trying to shoot through the door. 23, 3 and 3. Even though Flush is stealing the limelight. Yeah. To be, it must be so awesome to be paid to be JW in this game. Because you're just having fun all the time. Because you're not playing standard Counter-Strike. You're not playing by the book. There is no book. You ate the book. You, bur you burn the book. You're using the book to balance the table. And you're just doing whatever you want approximately all the time. And sometimes he even wipes his ass with the book, James. I, that's, that's how I it feels know. for other players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true, actually. Like people would say, you know, if you could be, if you could like be any player in this game, who would you be? Oh, I'll be all of my stuff. Why wouldn't you be JW? Just bunny hop everywhere and shoot. Just do absurd things. Pick any weapon in the game you want, and just have the most awesome career. Anyway, it's pistol round. God sent looking to close this one quickly. We have a more traditional buy in terms of grenades from Epsilon. Yeah, just adding to the point. Yeah, guys, I'm gonna buy a sawn off shotgun for 15 rounds. Uh, don't, don't mind me. All right, all right, JW sounds sounds fine. Um, but yeah, <laughs> moving back into the pistol, we have a lot of Kevlar's, there's almost no nades actually. Which is betraying the trend that we have seen in the last couple of days. Of a proliferation of nades. This is not how you want to start a pistol when you only have two rounds, James. Crims with the one taps. You would like to have a bit of a more competitive pistol round. Bomb is now down. <coughs> this must feel very... Well, do you think they've uh, mentally conceded? Yeah. I s well, maybe. At this point, they abstain from whatever this Should madness is. Should going for the knife. But this is becoming qu this is quite doable now for Rez. Even as a smoke as well. I don't know that he would ever try to use it here, but he just gets that fast pop on Crims. Not going to happen this time around. Good effort, though. Rez has had some great rounds, actually, I've got to say, on uh, the first map. He was doing quite a good job, to be honest, for Epsilon on Cash, on Cache. But now Godson, they put their, their foot down on Dust 2. All the feet are down. Two rounds left for Godson to take this one over the line. Of course, Epsilon going to be going for the force buy. Choice was taken away a long time ago, it seems, in this particular map. Got an early long take using the range of their superior weaponry from Godsense. Three plays over towards the A site for the CT side. Make that two. The plan putting in some nice work with the Deagle, but he is somewhat exposed. Smartly going back to short, having some cover, but Schneider will tap him down. And now it's Rez alone. We are soon to be at uh, match point for Godsense. Four players tagged, but uh, Rez could do no more. Oh, this is a fast one. Or is it? It's not over yet, Dan. True. Double scouts coming out for Epsilon. Triple scouts coming out for Epsilon. Ooh. Rez is going to opt for the Deagle. Freddy B. No Deagle for him. Freddy B. The Blood in the Water is the best scout that they will ever be in the game. I'm saying that. That's a fact. <laughs> Triple scouts on the CT side, but it's JW to get the first pick. Sometimes things just don't go your way. And I think this might be one of those days. Disco dot plan is Disco dead. Just two scouts left. Well, still putting in some work. I mean, the bomb is going to get planted on A, but they will... Uh, I mean, Freddy B, he's, he's got that B bomb site on lockdown. <laughs> he's got a... He's, oh, <laughs> oh, come on. But come on. You have, to, you have to know at this point <laughs> that God's are pushing through that smoke. Yeah, you have yeah. to know. Yeah. There's no way Pronax is... As soon as that kill comes down... There's no way he's that's, just going to That's abandon. also the spot that you walk that side of the wall. They're going to try a knife. Oh, man, the Swedes. Oh, he's going to run the bullets. The Swedes. Uh, I'm, sure, Swedes. I'm sure there will be some camaraderie amongst their fellow countrymen. So the Swedish derby, Dan, as we've officially confirmed, 
is yeah. over and Godsent have given us quite an entertaining dust too with one of the most <laughs> absurd rounds. Just generally absurd rounds from both teams. It was but really mainly weird. from Godsent. Just absolute madness on dust too. That diffuse and flush or what on earth was that? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, just the way that entire round, just every facet of that round was just weird. Yeah, it so was indeed. That entire match was just weird. It's hard to actually take that that match like commentary seriously because both teams are not playing. Well, how do you commentate that? Because neither team, because it gets to a spot where Gosson are like, haha, we're, we're kind of in your heads right now. And so then they're doing super weird stuff. And the only way to play against that is to be like, is to, well, try and defeat their weird stuff. And then more weird stuff happens. It, it reminds me of the Street Fighter match where uh, Hakan was picked oh, yeah. by one player and then Dan was picked as a counter oh, pick God. who's is literally the worst player in the game and it just yeah. descended into madness you can find it on youtube if you're interested or i'll link it on my twitter anyway that's game two done we've got six more games coming up for you at the very least see you after the break